Okay, guys, I might have messed up big time. If I let you in on a little secret you promised not to tell, okay, great. So I may or may not have just shot a research class observatory seven times with a handgun and hit it with a hammer. I know that sounds bad, okay? I, I know, and it is bad, but maybe we can salvage something out of this situation because, you know, with inflation and everything going on right now, money's just been a little tight and I don't have $39 million lying around. My name's Anch, by the way. I know we didn't quite get off on the right foot, but, you know, would you be able to vouch for me when the director comes over? I could really use someone to back me up and, oh god, there he In is! In view of highly exaggerated and incorrect news stories of grave damage to the 2.7 meter McDonald Observatory reflector, a prompt summary of the facts may be of interest to the astronomical community. You may be wondering why we just reenacted this nonsense for you, but this exact situation happened to a research class observatory less than a year into its operation. The Harlan J. Smith Telescope, at one time the third largest in the entire world, suffered a severe act of vandalism in February of 1990, when a researcher shot its primary mirror seven times. Now, at a glance, it really seems like this should be the end for good old Smithy, especially since we're used to hearing about just how precisely made modern telescopes are. Their instruments have to be super cooled to reduce noise from the electronics, and their guidance systems are tuned to perfection. At the University of Arizona's own mirror lab, it takes years to polish and perfect the mirrors used in research class telescopes around the world. Having a slew of gunshots hit the mirror seems like just about the worst case scenario for the telescope. Luckily, the Smith Telescope's mirror is made out of a material called fused silica, which is tougher than the glass we're used to handling on a day-to-day -day basis. It turns out that the most important concerns for telescope optics are the average shape and smoothness of the surface. When the bullets hit the mirror, they took out a small chunk of the material, but left the overall shape of the mirror intact. This meant that the telescope might have lost a small bit of light collecting area, but the overall images, at worst, might have shown some minor diffraction artifacts. But don't take it from me, take it from the man himself, Dr. Harlan J. Smith. At the time, he was the director of the University of Texas's McDonald Observatory. Just five days after the incident, he released a report which went into depth about just how bad it was. It, of course, being the press, who he contended had completely blown everything out of proportion. The harm suffered by the mirror from his bullets and several preliminary blows with a hammer was extraordinarily small. The damage is limited to small craters about 3 to 5 centimeters in radius, which reduced the light collecting efficiency by about 1%. Astronomical observations of all types are essentially unimpaired by this tragic episode. This is quite possibly the greatest technical report I've ever read. Dr. Smith just made what was serious reporting on a scientific catastrophe seemed like nothing more than tabloid gossip. But this whole situation teaches us a very important lesson. Modern telescopes can seem like fragile or delicate research instruments, but they can actually be quite resilient. And this is especially relevant considering a very recent telescope scare, the JWST micrometeoroid impact. JWST's engineers were aware of the risk of small hits from space debris, so the telescope was built to endure these impacts. Just a few months after launch, however, the telescope was hit by a much larger than expected micrometeoroid, permanently deforming one of the telescope's 18 hexagonal mirror segments. Luckily, the affected area was pretty small, and the other segments were adjusted to correct for the distortion, resulting in a near-complete recovery. The real significance of this event is that NASA didn't anticipate it. Impacts this large were considered a possibility, but a rare one. The fact that it happened so soon after launch caused worries that Maybe space debris this large is more common than we thought. On the bright side, this event pushed scientists and engineers to develop new strategies to minimize the impacts of future collisions. And this is especially relevant given that JWST will pass through the trail of the illustrious Halley's Comet in the next two years. As long as these major impacts stay relatively rare, JWST should continue giving us breathtaking views of the cosmos and reminding us of the resilience of both modern telescopes and the brilliant minds behind them.